Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is Danielle Medina from Fit and Play Mama, and she's going to talk about educating parents and children about healthy eating, and she's going to be making a fabulous recipe. It's a watermelon fruit salad. I think it's got some pasta in it, too. It sounds very interesting. Please welcome her from Brooklyn, New York, Danielle Medina. It's very nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, Chef AJ. And I'm so glad to be on today. I'm really excited. Well, I'm excited to meet you. Uh, Your recipe sounds very intriguing, but your work sounds even more intriguing because tell us what you do in New York to promote plant-based eating, but also how you became plant-based yourself. Absolutely. I started out as a fitness instructor, I was teaching group fitness classes and yoga and Pilates, and I loved it. And my body was really strong. The only thing that was happening was that I had some health issues, especially gastrointestinal issues. And I was suffering from acne, brain fog, you name it. It was just a lot of things that when you go to a doctor, they just say, Oh, if you need anything, I can give you some medication for that. But I always knew that food was, had to do with the solution. And so in college, I had my bachelor's degree in food science and nutrition, but even there, I still wasn't learning about plant-based eating. So I really had to dive in and do my own research and really scout out different places where I could learn more. And being in New York city, there is a plethora of information here And I was so grateful to meet the nonprofit organization, Plant Powered Metro New York, which is a nonprofit and they help people to overcome a lot of chronic illnesses and diseases. And then I decided to take a mentorship program with them and I was assigned a retired physician and I, and this was in 2021. So I had a long journey before that, really trying to figure it out. But once I was able to say to myself at the beginning of 2021, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to solve all of the health issues that I was facing. And at that time I was still, you know, doing my, my classes and teaching and, and I, but I really needed to heal myself from within and I was turning 40. So I was like, okay, all of this has to come together now because I want to make sure that I age gracefully and I have a daughter and I also homeschool her as well. So I need energy for all different parts of my life. So once that was done and I was able to transition to completely 100% whole food plant-based SOS free, and I just felt so great. My skin was amazing. I had a ton of energy. And I really thought that, you know what? I would love to apply this to what I do already, which is I created, and you'll see I have a I have a slide presentation, but real briefly, Fit and Play Mama came out of not being able to work and in, in 2020 in the places that I was working before. So then I said, you know what? I have this virtual platform and I want to use this and I want to show parents that are home with their kids and kind of like, what do we do now? How do we move? How do we eat? And I was able to transition that into what Fit and Play Mama is now, which is a lifestyle coaching service. And I provide all these programs, not for just individuals, but for also for a different nonprofit organizations and businesses. So it's been really an amazing journey. Well, you know, it's funny you said about turning 40, you don't even look 40 now. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So that's amazing. Yeah. COVID made a a lot of people have to pivot their business. I mean, I never had a show before COVID. So it's, it's interesting how people created so much out of, you know, something that was bad and negative. So, so many beautiful things came out of it. Absolutely. And I have to say that, again, having the support system of the Plant Powered Metro New York, and then I even then went on to getting my certification for a Food for Life instructor. For anyone who doesn't know what a Food for Life instructor is, it's by the nonprofit organization, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and they train 
people how to conduct plant-based culinary education classes. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I really was able to thrive in that industry because I think it was a combination of my passion of how I healed myself and then to be able to go out and have their curriculum. And then I was able to create my own curriculum as well. So it really is just a, a lovely way to proceed with everything that I'm doing. Nice. And did, is, is, is your, is your daughter, did you raise her plant-based? Did you have a plant-based pregnancy? So at that time I was more vegetarian. So I wasn't eating very much meat except for maybe occasional fish. But I, again, I always knew even during pregnancy that there was a key to eating more plant-based foods. So it was always in the back of my head because of my education and because of reading so much, I always had that feeling that I should probably eat more of my, you know, fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes. But I, I was not a hundred percent at that time. Once I had my daughter in my head again, I said, I don't know. I don't think I should really feed her any kind of milk product products or maybe any meat at all. So honestly, she has been almost uh, plant-based for her whole life. I mean, she did in the beginning have a little bit of dairy, but not, no meat at all. She has just been completely meat free, which has been amazing. What's the, what's the vegan or plant-based scene like in Brooklyn where you live? Are there restaurants? Are there meetups? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's thriving here. It's amazing. You can go to any section in Brooklyn and it's very, very plant friendly. And the, there's one restaurant that I highly recommend and it's in Fort Greene, if anybody knows where that is in Brooklyn. And uh, it's called Raw's Plant-Based. Very good. It's Ethiopian plant-based food. It's just delicious. So I highly recommend because it's a really nice combination of ethnic cultural foods becoming plant-based. There's another, there's a Jamaican place as well that we go to. And I think it's called Natural Blend. And it's, again, it's just amazing to have plant-based foods, but just different, you know, made differently. That's cool. Yeah, I love Ethiopian food because you can eat it with your hands. That's why I like wraps. I like food I can pick up. Absolutely. Yeah, I love your poster. Before I moved it, it broke in the move, but I had that same framed poster from PCRM. Yeah, it's, it's so great because again, when I'm teaching my classes and especially whether it's adult or children classes, it's really good to have the visual because people need to see what the plate actually looks like. And growing up, I was growing up with the pyramid and it, it was just really difficult to understand a bit and it wasn't necessarily accurate as much. But for this, it's really great to see like how it sections off on your plate and the colors, again, that's the nice part, especially when teaching children and fit and families, how wonderful it is to have a colorful plate. And it's almost like we always say when I'm teaching classes, eat the rainbow, eat as many colors as possible because you know that you're getting all the nutrients and antioxidants that your body needs. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. Did you want to start your presentation? Yes, absolutely. Nice. Okay. All right. Let me know if you can see this on. Perfect. Yeah. Just, uh, just change it into, you know, cause I can see your other slides, but it, yeah, perfect now. All right. And then let me, can you see, you don't see any boxes, right? Nope, just playfully healthy, a family guide to wholesome living. But okay, thanks. awesome. Okay, so welcome everyone and anyone who's new to Fit and Play Mama. Again, I'm Danielle Medina, and today we are going to be speaking about playfully healthy, a family wholesome journey. We will explore skills needed to teach healthful eating habits to children in a fun and playful experience. As parents and caregivers, we want to learn how to make the best healthy habits to positively impact our child's physical and mental development. On the flip side, we wanna take care of ourselves as well by creating helpful daily habits to help us at any age, and we wanna age gracefully, right? Being playfully healthy weaves traditional practices and adds an element of fun into our lives. 
we will go over three specific tools to help you start you and your family's journey. And here's a picture, if you could see to the right, that is a family yoga class that I did at a place in, Bam, in, in Brooklyn called Bam Kids. And this was a great experience because it's outdoors, the family was out, and this was an event to help promote not only art and culture, but also healthy living. So I was able to have that experience with them. And then to the left is what we actually are cooking today. Doesn't it look delicious? This is that watermelon fruit pasta salad. It's absolutely good. And I can't wait to do that with you at the end. Okay. So who is Danielle Medina? Well, I have been a certified fitness and yoga instructor for over 20 years. This has been a life journey. I have absolutely loved all of the people that I have met throughout my career. I have helped many people from young to all ages. And it's been an amazing experience to see the transition of my clients from trying to achieve their goals to actually reaching them and feeling good and wanting to continue with that. So it's so great to see that. And if you could see that as a picture of me and my daughter having some fun cooking at one of our cooking classes, you will be seeing her very shortly. Cute. <laughs> I'm also a plant-based nutritionist. So like I said, I went to college and I knew that to, the way to heal myself was through learning more about nutrition. So I have my degree in plant-based, or actually not plant-based, but food science and nutrition. And it was really through there that I was able to learn more about plant-based foods and really, again, learn how to heal my body and leave it, leave all that information or relay all that information to my clients. I'm a food for life instructor from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, a nonprofit organization based in Washington, DC, headed by Dr. Neil Barnard. He's been an amazing mentor here in the sense that he has created this program that is made by physicians, dietitians, nurses to teach different curriculum to people who have been suffering from whether it's diabetes or chronic illnesses, any kind, and they have curriculums to help people through that, whether you're teaching nutrition classes and plant-based cooking classes. And then finally, I wrapped it all up. And in 2021, I had made myself a business owner by creating Fit and Play Mama. And this has been an amazing journey of combining not only my fitness, my nutrition, but also learning how to be a mom through this. I'm a homeschooling mom and I am trying to do my best like everybody else in this world, but there's ways of doing it and making it more fun and playful. And we'll talk more about that. Take a look at this picture. Raise your hand if you or someone you know has suffered from a health related issue or disease. I definitely did. You are not alone. What if I told you that I was someone who suffered from painful and embarrassing acne? As you could see, this is a photo taken in my teenager years, but it went through my adult years as well. And I suffer from gastrointestinal issues and brain fog. This person here had to force a smile on her face because it was a painful time and these issues went on for a while. However, due to my love of learning and investigating how to properly heal my body and improve my mental health, I was able to get back to the joy I felt as a child. How I did it is what I'm going to show you today. Let's dive into playfully healthy approach. This is where you get to nurture your mind, body, and soul. These are the three ways to achieve the most effective results. They are as follows. Incorporate daily movement, cooking time in the kitchen, and a mind, find a mindfulness practice or even a reflection. Have some time to reflect 
on the day. So again, in these photos real quick, there on the left is on the top left, me and my daughter, we love hiking and my, my husband, we're very uh, into hiking, we're avid hikers. And this is a place up in upstate New York and it is actually such a beautiful place to go. It's not that far. We're in the city, we're in the concrete jungle here. But the amazing thing is you just have to drive a little bit and you get to see nature. And that's so such a healing solution for us. On the bottom left is one of my plant-based culinary education classes. And this is the kids classes, one of the kids classes. My daughter is there and she's having so much fun with her friends. And we're learning not only to just chop up our food, but we're eating it and we're having fun. And it's been, it was really an amazing experience. And then on the, on the other side, the right is a yoga and movement class. And once again, you cannot be doing movement outside. When you get outside, you have the sun in, on, your, on your skin and it feels really good. So there goes that playfulness that I actually tried to keep up within not only myself, but with all of my students and clients. So let's fill in the blank here. As of 2022, what percentage of children between the ages of two to 19 years old are obese? I'm going to guess um, 33%. Okay. So we're only talking about beast, not overweight. So that oh, okay. could be, uh, that um, could be. Um, how about 10%? Well, close. It's over Ooh. 19%. Wow. Yeah, this number does not include children who are overweight. So unfortunately, this number is rising with each passing year. So the Center for Disease and Control and Prevention continues with this statement. Poor diet and low levels of physical activity affect overall health and are significant risk factors for obesity and chronic disease. Obesity in the United States affects over 41% of adults and over 19% of children and accounts for approximately they are ready there. So there, and there also is an annual healthcare costs for $1.4 billion, $1.4 billion in our healthcare costs. That's insane. So we need to do better for our children, especially since these are the, our future. We need to take care of them. How do we do this? So here we go with our first way of doing it, plant-based kids nutrition classes. And it goes like this. For some of my classes, I start my class with a song. Are you ready? Are you ready for a cooking class? For a cooking class, I see the rainbow colors of all the yummy food. Red, orange, and yellow, green, purple, and blue. <laughs> the kids light up. They love it. Now picture this. Picture you are an energetic, curious child walking into your kitchen and being greeted by your smiling parent or caregiver. They help you put on an apron, a chef's hat, making you feel like a real chef. You sit down at the table and fill up colorful bowls and cookware. You sit down and your eyes light up with excitement because you get to cut into a fresh vegetable. You can't believe your eyes when you see a green cucumber and you get your little kid sized knife and you cut right into it. At that moment, you are not only playing with your food, but you're learning about it. This is the magic of plant-based nutrition classes. This story, this story image is not only what I've observed in my culinary education classes, but we can repeat this experience through meal prepping, cooking and eating together. There are many ways to be creative and empower families to consume more nutritious plant-based foods. So let's follow this equation. Play plus movement equals happy hormones, of course. <laughs> 
how do we get to release these hormones? Well, if you have physical activity and play, you can have a positive impact on your mood and emotions by stimulating the release of certain hormones such as dopamine and serotonin. Okay, so how do we get to do this playful movement? Well, first, you wanna make sure it's a good idea to consult your doctor before starting any of these physical activities. Once you have a medical clearance, then here we go. You can break a, break a sweat and feel the burn by a powerful walk, jog, or, or join a group fitness class. This is an obstacle course class that I had in my summer camp, and it was so much fun. The kids really enjoyed it, and it was not only fun for them, but they were working out the whole time. Or how about increasing your flexibility and de-stressing your mind? Yoga is a great option that you can help release tension and it activates the parasympathetic nervous system and relaxes your body. So this here again is another class of mine that I taught. Look at all these kids, they're doing their crab walk and they look pretty awesome doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what, if all else fails, just go up and try a handstand. Me and my daughter, we tried it. It was fun. <laughs> you can try hula hooping. You can do anything that helps you not only feel good, but puts a smile on your face. Let's talk about reflection time. So finally, give yourself time to sit and reflect on the day. It can help reduce stress and anxiety and improve focus. Whether you're meditating by yourself in a group or with your child, you can use different breathing exercises and techniques like this one here, I have a breathing ball. Or how about try some food art? Get in the kitchen and start making beautiful food. Really just make sure that you take good care of what you're eating and be creative with it. These are pictures from my own home and they look so beautiful to me. And I really feel that the way that we present our food is also very pleasing to the eyes and the body. So in closing, the one thing that I want to leave you with within this presentation is to be your best self today. Eat more plants, play, and be kind to yourself. Prioritize your health and well-being so that you can spread the joy to your family and live your best life together. And this is right here, again, another great picture of capturing us, my daughter and I, having fun in the kitchen and really just having that playfulness in everything that we do. It's so important to be able to laugh and, and enjoy each day as it comes. And that is the end of my presentation. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to put myself <laughs> back there. There we go. It sounds like so much fun what you do. Yes. Absolutely. And I, like I said, I'm only here because I really want, this is such a huge passion for me to teach people how to be more creative in their lives. And it's, it's tough. You know, there's a lot of stresses in the, in our lives and we need to learn how to navigate through them. And there's plenty of tools out there. And this is part of what I created is how to make it more playful and fun for not only for you, but just for the entire family. Where do you find your customers? Well, they either find me or I do reach out to different organizations, especially here in New York City and beyond as well, where I see that they have certain programs that are for either senior centers or um, whether they're for children. And I really want to make sure that they have a program in place that talks about, especially the plant-based nutrition classes, because that is something that they, if they learn at a young age, it will just go through, they will go through life with that information. And so important. What about the food that's served in schools? Do you ever get involved with that? Because it's not usually very healthy. No, unfortunately it's not. And here in New York, again, because we are, we have a pretty plant forward mayor, uh, Mayor At, uh, Eric Adams, he is really pushing through to 
really have more plant-based options in the schools. And so that here, at least in New York City, we do have more options. Um, I don't know exactly how the rest of the, the states are going, but I think that I think I saw recently that there are a lot more mayors in different states that are looking to follow Mayor Adams' lead and to promote more plant-based foods options in the schools. That's great. I had him on the show twice before he was mayor. Now he's probably too too big to come on the show, but that's fantastic to have a, 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 a you know vegan or plant based mayor. Absolutely, yeah. And I just recently with Plant Powered Metro New York, I went to Racy Mansion, and he was honoring honoring all of the food service workers and the culinary educators there for their work in the city. And it was really amazing listening to him talk about his own issues and how he was able to heal himself. So we really are going in the right direction. And I really believe that it's going to trickle into other states as well. That's great. Are there any plant-based doctors that you know of in your area? There's Dr. Denea. He is, I believe he's based in Brooklyn Heights. He's been really amazing. He has, um, I've seen his, his talks and he just has a lot of information. And I, I know that I have actually even referred him to for certain clients as well. So he's really good. That's great. I love it. Your daughter does she ever question why she eats the way she is? Has she ever been to like an animal sanctuary or she just thinks it's the right way to eat and the healthiest way to eat? Yeah, that's a great question. When we are home, so we're hundred percent plant-based at home. When we do go out to say birthday parties or uh, family gatherings, there is, you know, there's always some sort of cake. There's always some sort of pizza around. And we definitely encourage her to eat the more plant-based foods. But at the same time, I don't want her to feel like she can't have the, the cake or the pizza. So there are times when she will eat it. But the thing about her is really funny because the way that we eat, probably like for her 90 and almost 99% of the time, she's very in tune with her body, actually. When she eats something that's very sweet, within like a few bites, She's just like, oh, you know, she's like, this is really good, but where's my water? <laughs> that is funny. Your husband plant-based also? He's also probably about 95% plant-based. So, you know, again, he is still, um, he still has occasional fish and, um, you know, when we go out, but again, everybody at home is hundred percent plant-based when I'm oh, cooking. Here's the thing. Don't let him leave. No, I'm just kidding. I know, right? No. Never no, but- let him go out. But he, even him, who, when he goes and he tastes different foods afterwards, he does say, you know, oh, I feel a little groggy. I feel a little this. So he, he knows as well. And he's very in tune with his body. So I feel like we've all become super in tune with our bodies at this point that we know when we're eating really well and we know when we're eating not so well. (laughs) Yeah. What type of yoga do you teach children? I teach, it's a kid's yoga. It's very fun. So what we do is we go on yoga adventures. And so I think of themes. And then what I do is I then find the equivalent yoga pose to the animal that we're doing or a certain structure that we have to do. And then I create these curriculum and then they get to, they get to do it with that, with me. And it's just so much fun because they're not only doing the poses, but they're creative as well. They want to say, they, they raise their hand and they're like, Oh, can we do this pose? Can we do that pose? And it's really fun for them because they're not only learning about yoga and the, and the practice, but they're using their creativity and being, I have a, also an early education background, and that's the spark that you really want to make sure that you keep even as you get older, even in, even in my age, I want to keep that spark of creativity. I never want to lose it. I never want to feel like, oh, you know, I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to learn anymore. There's so much to learn. And that's what I try to give to the kids in my classes. When you teach cooking, I said, do they actually do hands-on or do they actually get into the kitchen themselves? Absolutely. And so one of the things when I'm teaching the kids cooking classes, 
I let the, wherever we're teaching, I told, I tell them, I, I say that this is going to get pretty messy in here <laughs> because kids are learning. They're trying to learn how to chop up their, their fruits and their vegetables. They're trying to assemble it. So it can get a little messy if they are not in the kitchen all the time. The more they learn, that skill improves. Then they're able to have a less, less mess. But in the beginning, they're going to, it's going to be a little messy. And I have taught private, private sessions to families on how to achieve that. And they really, it's, it's been a really amazing experience for them as well, because I see them not only eating really well, but they're bonding in the kitchen, which then in the child's mind, they're remembering this. This is a memory, this going into their memory bank and they're going to remember this for a very long time. So nice. What, what kind of things do you eat on a daily basis and feed your family? Well, I love making Buddha bowls. And for anybody who doesn't know what a Buddha bowl is, just get a bowl and you put a grain in, whether it's brown rice or quinoa. I love farro, any kind of whole grain. Then after that, you put some sort of bean. And I like my black beans, my, my red beans. I even like azu azuki beans, which is more of a <clears throat> Japanese bean. It's so good. And then you put in your greens. Um, so it's either kale, collard greens, spinach, any kind of green. And then I put in my root vegetables. So I love sweet potatoes. Kabocha is one of our favorites in this house. We love kabocha, squash, and and then we put it all in. Then you, I make this really simple sauce that goes on top, which is tahini, tamari, and water. And that's it. You mix it up, you put it on. And it is, I mean, we have been eating this bowl for years, very, even before my daughter was born, my husband and I, and we call it a macro bowl because it's from the macrobiotic diet. And so, but it's just the most like, satisfying comfort food that I can, that I can make. So that's one. The other thing I really like to make is my own desserts. Cause as you could see, when I had the really bad acne, I was eating a lot of sugary foods. I was an absolute sugar addict. Can't tell you how much sugar was in my life. So knowing that what I need to do is I just need to make my own recipes. And so I've been learning how to just create some really good, healthy plant-based desserts. And that's what we do now. So when we go away, like we went away this past week and I made my dessert beforehand and I took it with us because it was a road trip. And I made sure that we had plant-based banana bread so that I, no one was looking for snacks and, and like on our trip. It's like, here's the sweet, this is what we're gonna eat. And that's usually what we do when we, when we travel, I make sure that I have my brown rice. I make sure that I have some sort of bean involved and then the fruit, the fruits and vegetables we usually get when, once we're there, but I just need my staples to make sure that we're still eating right. And what's, what are breakfasts typically in your home? Yeah. So breakfast can be either overnight cooked oats, which I absolutely love and kids I'm telling you, kids love overnight cooked oats. It's such a fun thing to make for them and they love it. The other thing is tofu scramble. Oh, I can't get, I, I just, we love tofu scramble in this house. It's, we just eat it all the time and I make it with all different vegetables in it. And I put my mushrooms in it. I put some, some spinach in it. And anything else that I, I have that I feel like can go in there, scramble it up and we just put it in a wrap and we are, it's breakfast wraps and it's just amazing. That's great. I love it. Does your daughter like to help you in the kitchen in general? She does. Yeah, definitely. There are times when she's just like, I just want to play. And I don't want to go in the kitchen. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I'm not saying that they have to be in the kitchen all the time. Sometimes it's nice to be in the kitchen by yourself and you're just doing your thing and there's not a big mess. But there are times when I do invite her in. And I do that when when we're making this, actually this recipe today, the, the watermelon fruit pasta salad, or when I make the desserts. 
And the reason why I'm very strategic with this is because I want her to see what goes in the desserts. I want her to see the ingredients so that when she does eat food or desserts that are not made by us, she can identify and say, oh, I guess, you know, they probably use this, they used sugar. They probably used this or, and she, her palate is really fine. It's fine too now. Like she can really tell like what's in different uh, recipes. So that's, that's been really fun. Nice. Oh, Gabrielle is saying, well, your skin is flawless now. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, it, it's been a road to recovery. And I, I mean, I really had some painful, painful acne. I had to actually at the age of, I want to say probably 18 years old, around 18 years old, I went to dermatologist after dermatologist. And this one dermatologist said to me, well, how about we put you on some Accutane? Now, I don't know if everyone's familiar with Accutane, but it's a very, very strong drug that you have to get tested. You have to get blood work. I think it's every month, once a month. So it was very, um, it was, it, it had tons of side effects as well. And I experienced one of those side effects. So I got scared because the, that side effect was just really not something I wanted. And I stopped it immediately. And then that's when I said, I need to find this solution and I'm going to find it through what I eat. And I'm, I need to do that. And I, you know, again, a long journey, but I was able to finally find that solution. Are you familiar with Nina and Randa Nelson of the clear skin diet? Because they were already vegan from birth, but you know, they were eating a higher fat and they were able to, they have really, really horrible acne and they were able to, you know, reverse it. Yeah. I think I have read about them and I, and it's funny because even now I still may have an occasional pimple. And I think it's because of the certain or like high fats, like maybe if I have too much um, cashews yeah. or too much avocado. And so I have to actually still be mindful because I think my, the way my body processes that those foods is that I can have a little bit, but not a lot. So I really do need to watch at least those higher fat foods. Right. That was the case with them. They had to go on more of a McDougal Esselstyn type lower fat to get rid of their unretractable acne. Absolutely. How old is your daughter? She is eight. She's eight years old. She's thriving. She's super healthy. She loves to dance. She loves to do gymnastics. And she's, a, I have to say, she's probably one of the healthiest kids I know. She is honestly, when we go to the doctors and we get our her check up every year, her yearly check up. The doctor's just like, Oh, everything's great. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, keep doing. And I'm like, thank you, doctor. Does she have any friends that are uh, vegan or plant-based or do you have any other family members that are? Yeah, we do have a few other families that are vegetarians. We do have some fr fam family friends that are vegan. So it's really nice for her to see that she's not the only one eating this way. Definitely, especially being again in Brooklyn, you know, and New York City, we do have where we have access to a lot of different people here, right? So, and you can, there's plenty of groups, you know, that you can friend and have uh, go to meetups. So it's really something that I have to say, I'm very grateful and, and, and we have, we have that, that network. Nice. You know, I never would have thought to put, you know, fruit in a pasta salad, especially watermelon. Yeah. So this actually came from one of the classes that I was going to do and it was, it was summertime. Right. And then what we had to do is come up with something that, and especially this was geared towards the African-American community. And I wanted something that represented uh, like something where they felt like this was something that they could relate to and, and definitely have um, a connection to food. Because again, when you're dealing with different populations, you really want to be sensitive to their cultural needs. Everybody eats differently. Everybody uses spices differently. And so I really thought that 
the with the pasta and the watermelon and all the different fruits that it would be really nice. And with the balsamic, the Dr. Furman's uh, walnut vinaigrette dressing, it was it just was a beautiful combination. And so I've been using this recipe not only for that one time, but like for all the other of uh, classes that I've been teaching. And it's been a really big hit. The kids really like it as well. That's cool. I never would have thought to put fruit with pasta. So very yes. cool. Yes. Yeah. You want to show us how you make it? Absolutely. So I'm going to just move my screen just a little bit so that you have a better view of my cutting board. Okay. So the first thing that I like to do in my classes is that I want to make it fun. And I always say, you know what, let's make it dress up time. So what we do is we grab our aprons, we put them on because it's dress up time. We're going to pretend that we are the super chefs like Chef AJ, right? And we're going to make some delicious foods and we're going to have everything ready to go. So I have a special guest here that's joining us today. And would you like to come on over? Yeah. Okay, she's getting ready. She's getting her special apron ready. Okay. <laughs> Let me just make sure that this is adjusted a little bit more. Okay, perfect. So we're going to start out with a very big bowl. Okay. Oh, come over here and I'll do it for you. You can say hi as I'm doing it. Ready? <gasps> Oh my God, she's gorgeous. Hi, Maya. How are you? Do you like eat? Do you like eating plant foods? Yes, <laughs> she does. Do you, have, do you have any pets, Maya? No, but she. But you love pets, though. She what? absolutely loves pets. Oh, tell mommy to get you one. <laughs> I want a dog. A dog. Okay. <laughs> that would be, when, yes, we will get a dog at some point. All right. So sometimes at, if you're home, they just start eating it and they just start picking at it. So first we have our pasta, right? And I already cooked our pasta. This is called, and I have the package here. This is a brown rice pasta by, and it's Fusilli. This is the type of pasta. It's from Pasta Joy Ready. And we really like this because it's just made out of brown rice and water. So super clean ingredients. And we're going to put some in our pasta bowl now. But it doesn't taste like rice. It doesn't taste like rice. Well, yeah, right? It tastes like pasta. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the cool thing about it. And it's gluten-free, right? So for anybody who doesn't want the gluten, it's gluten-free. And we have, so here we go. Here's our pasta bowl. And then let me get my ingredients out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some watermelon. So I'm gonna put this to the side for now, right? And then, and the cool thing about this is no matter how big your kitchen is or how small your kitchen is, this can be done pretty easily, right? So we have our watermelon, right? And watermelon is so good because it's packed with lots of vitamins, vitamin A and vitamin C. And it's mostly water. It's 92% water, which is so good, especially in the summertime, right? So here we go. We're going to put some of our watermelon in. So here's our spoon, and we're just going to pour it in. Yep. Great. And then we're going to put that down. And then the next thing you're going to add is water. So this is a, it's called a, let's see if I can get this right. It's a golden hami melon. So it's not, it's like a cantaloupe, but it's longer. It's the oblong. So it looks very much like watermelon, uh, like cantaloupe, but it's a little different. And the great thing is because we live in Brooklyn, there's a lot of different ethnic grocery stores. So you get things that you don't normally get, say at big stores like Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. It's, it's really nice to get international foods. Hey, it's good. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, we're talking about the rainbow, right? So with the rainbow, we're already starting here with our colors. Next, we're going to have some yellow pineapple. Yellow pineapple. All right. So let's get here our pineapples. And what I'm gonna do is we have a little chunk here. 
and we're going to show them how you cut so well okay all right so here here's your kid friendly knife i'm going to cut this in half you're going to cut one slice over here and i'm going to cut so you want to do it in bite size okay all right and then we're going to cut it so you want to, again, you want to make sure it's bite size because if it's too big, <laughs> how are you going to put it in your mouth, right? Oh, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to put mine in. Very good. Do you need a little help? Yeah. Sometimes water, uh, so this is pineapple. Sometimes pineapple can get a little bit tough in the middle, right? And it has that bromelain in it, right, which, which is a digestive enzyme that helps your belly process all the food, right? All right, great. Here we go. So we're still getting that beautiful color. And then we have seedless grapes. So I found in my grocery store, it's black seedless grapes. But they're actually blue. They look like a, kind of like a bluish purple, right? But they call them black. So because they kind of look like they kind of look like it, right? So if you want, you can cut them up, right? In again, bite sizes, or you can leave them whole. Either it's up, really up to you. That's the great part about making this dish is that it's up to you to be creative, and however, how much you want Wait, to put. We forgot to wash our hands. Oh, I washed my hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is that you washed your hands a little bit earlier today. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Charles is asking, do you use seedless or seeded watermelon? So the watermelon that I chose just now was seedless. And that was just the one that I saw at the grocery store. But I can, I'm good with either one, actually. Right. He says, do you have concern missing out on nutrients with seedless? Why would seedless have less nutrients? I prefer seedless. It's just too much work the other I, way for me. I, I, I'm assuming that because it's made that way. Maybe, I, I don't know if it's like naturally made seed, seedless. I, I wonder if that's a, I have to do more research on that, but I probably am assuming by that comment it's, that it's healthier because it's natural. It's more natural, right? So then we have our Yay. strawberries, of course. How could you not have strawberries? <laughs> so we're going to put some, we're going to eat some strawberries and we're going to put some strawberries in, right? All right. And, and then, then we're going to cut some strawberries. And you can cut, yep, yeah, you can cut some strawberries. Very good. I'm going to cut. What's your favorite, uh, Maya, what's your favorite fruit? Um, mango, strawberries, raspberries, and um, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and what's, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. And, and what's your favorite vegetable? Oh wait, and my my other favorite fruit is cucumber. That's actually Ooh. a fruit. Yeah, you're right. That's a fruit. Wow. My favorite vegetable is broccoli. Me too. Broccoli, yeah. nice. Broccoli's good. Broccoli is really good. What's, what's your favorite thing that mommy makes? There's a lot. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> I think you like when I make you soba noodles. And right. Soba noodles. There's also oh the vegan mac and cheese as vegan well. Vegan right? mac and cheese, fruit pasta salad. <laughs> The popsicles that you made. Oh, yes. We made homemade popsicle sticks yesterday. So it was so good. So good. What, what did you put in them? Uh, we put bananas and strawberries and blueberries. And we put maple syrup and a little bit of cashews in it. Nice. So now we're squeezing a fresh lime onto the pasta salad. I love lime with cucumbers. Yeah, lime and cucumbers are a really good mix, right? And then, so this actually calls for mint. Unfortunately, we went to the store today and there was no mint. So we can't put any mint on it, but that's okay. Maya's not crazy about mint. I love mint, especially with the watermelon. So good. But 
today we're just going to do without the, the mint. That's good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put this to the side now because we're going to make Dr. Furman's walnut vinaigrette dressing that's oil free. Oh my goodness. Oh, so good. So we have our blender here and we're going to use a half a cup of water. Oh, there's water right there. Oh, for you. Yeah. Uh, and what? my water is right there. Oh. Yeah. Then we're going to use a balsamic vinaigrette. I know, Chef AJ, that you have your California balsamic vinegars. And you will have some too for being on the show. And you get to choose two flavors. So maybe you can choose one and Maya can choose one. That's what I was like thinking because if for this recipe, I think the island pineapple balsamic would probably be really nice with this. Really delicious. Is that, is that uh, 365 balsamic? It is. It is. Yep. That's good. And Costco has a good organic balsamic too. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we are very much into shopping at the big grocery stores just because it's just easy to get a lot of, but we also like to do farmer's markets as well. Okay. Next, let's put the rest of the recipe in. So if you don't have balsamic vinegar, you can also use apple cider vinegar, right? And we like apple cider vinegar. That's pretty good. And it helps when you're sick. Oh, yeah, it does, right? Sometimes it's good for just to have like a little bit in your water, right? Yes. Next, we're going to add some walnuts. This is the healthy fats. <laughs> this is the healthy fats. So we're going to put, so we did what? We did a half a cup of water, one fourth cup of the balsamic vinegar, and then one fourth cup of the walnuts. Now, if you have a nut allergy, you can completely just eliminate the nuts or you can use sunflower seed, uh, the sun butter. If uh, you can use that or sunflower seed, but you can just completely el eliminate this part. Okay. And then we have our, we have to sweeten it, right? So we're going to sweeten it with raisins. Some raisins. And if you don't have raisins, have some dates, right? So that's another good sweetener. And we're gonna put that right on it. Perfect. And then we have some, what is this? Do you know what this is? Garlic. Garlic, perfect. That's right. You're gonna put one clove of garlic in there. Lemon. Oh, then you can actually put the whole thing in. <laughs> put the whole thing in. And then a little, like get it a little spicy in here. We're gonna have some yeah. <laughs> Dijon mustard. But just, I'm not going to put them. Yeah. So for Maya, I'm going to put a little less, right? We're just, we're going to have a little taste to it. We have to have that little like zing to it, right? Maybe. Oh, and for, you know, and decoration too. We want to put, <laughs> we want to put the pineapple here, right? Just the, the pineapple. I like, I like. You get it. What do you do with it? Carmen <laughs> <laughs> Miranda. Right. <laughs> so we'll put that here just to be festive, right? We <laughs> want to have a nice layout here. Then I have to get the top, which I don't, oh, here's the top. But because we're going to put this all together, and we, oh, and there's also dried thyme. And it calls for one fourth teaspoon of thyme. I'm just going to eyeball this. Eyeball? Eyeball. It just means that you're, you're not like measuring it, but you're just, you know, like I know what one fourth teaspoon is. Now, because this is going to go on, I have something for all the audience to do, including Chef AJ. While this is blending up, we challenge you because again, you know, we're doing food, but we also have to do some fitness, right? It's fitness hour. So while this is blending up, we're gonna do arms up and tap your leg to the side. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Let me do the arms from where there I am. There you go. There you go. Okay, so ready, set. Yeah. All right, everyone take a deep breath in and breathe out. All right. So we have our vinaigrette dressing that we can- Whoa, it smells sweet. Ooh, yeah, I love it. It's just so good. This 
is one of our favorite dressings that we put on even just regular, even a regular salad would love this. Okay, now we're gonna pour it on and here we go. Do you have a cookbook, Danielle? So I'm actually in the process of writing something. So hopefully that will be up pretty soon. <laughs> and do you have a garden? Do you no, know? We don't have a garden. We have community gardens. So what's great about the community garden is that you can go and visit. You can, if you sign up, you can have your own plot and you can then either have your own uh, or herb garden or any kind of um, fruit or vegetable that you want to grow, or you can just be there in the garden. It's really nice. I water the plants. You do water the plants, that's right. Okay, now it's time for us to taste it. So I have two bowls here. Yummy, 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 yummy. All right, so I'm going- I don't want the, the orange stuff. You don't want the orange stuff, so you just have to pick it out. Because okay. I, I can't really- what, what is the orange stuff she doesn't want? So I think it's the melon. It's like the, um, it looks like the cantaloupe. It's the hummy melon. I don't know. She, she, they're still picky, you know, kids still are picky, no matter how much you give them like different foods, but that's okay. Eventually you will like it or maybe not. <laughs> All right. Now we have our forks. Okay. And then let's, so first let's show, right? We're going to show with Chef AJ what it looks like. I never would have thought to combine fruit with pasta, honestly. Has anyone done that before? Mind-blowing. Right? And then we get to taste it. Let's taste it. Yummy. Mmm. So good. This is a recipe that you can definitely do for a picnic. This is so easy to bring and to, it won't, you don't need any kind of refrigeration. And actually, the more that you let it marinate in the vinaigrette dressing, the better it tastes. So this is something that you can definitely make the night before. If you have a picnic or are you just going out for the day and you just wanna make sure that you have something to eat, uh, this is really good. And as you can see, because it, it has the pasta, it has the fruit, children are more likely to eat it, which is that, that's exactly what we want. That's fantastic. It looks delicious. Um, have, there's a question from Charles. Have you ever tried grated gro coconut in, in any of your salad dressings? Ooh, grated coconut. I actually have some coconut in, in my refrigerator. I have, I usually sprinkle it on, on my smoothies. Um, let's see what else do I sprinkle it on? Some of my plant-based desserts, but I haven't actually put it on my, in my dressing or my salads or my dressing, but that might be actually really nice with this because it has that very tropical taste to it. So I don't see why not. Maya, what's your favorite starch? And if you don't know what starch is like, what do you, do you like things like beans or rice or potatoes or sweet potatoes? Do you like any of those foods? I like beans and rice. Yeah. And I like um, buckwheat. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I even like buckwheat and I'm a grown up. That's amazing. Yeah. When she was a baby, instead of her, instead of giving her rice cereals, I would give her cream of buckwheat cereal. So she was eating that and she just knows now what buckwheat is, which is, which is pretty, pretty cool that you know that. <laughs> Marley. Sure. Absolutely. See more, more, please. Right. That's great. Kid tested and mother approved. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. So this was a wonderful presentation, both the PowerPoint and the recipe. If people want to follow you, do you have social media? We, we have everything in the show notes, but is there a particular place you like them to go? Your website, your Instagram? Absolutely. So they can follow me. It's at, my handle is fit and play mama, F I T N play P L Y and mama M A M A. And I have a, a website at fit and play, so fit and play And yeah, I, I absolutely hope everybody joins on our playfully healthy journey. And then I think Maya has, she wants to show you 
the popsicle stick that we made the other day. Wow, those look good. Maya, Susanna says, do you have any idea what you want to be when you grow up? A gymnast. <laughs> nice. Okay. That would be amazing. Do you do gymnastics now? Yeah. That's so cool. All right. I love it. Well, you guys are great. Thank you so much. It's so nice to meet you, Maya. As soon as we get off the show, I'm going to send your mom an email and you can pick two flavors of California balsamic. So I think it's only fair that your mom picks one and you pick one. There's even a chocolate, believe it or not. That sounds good, right? <laughs> You're precious. Well, it's very nice to meet both of you. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. It's been a great experience and we hope that we inspire other people, families to just really keep moving, keep eating healthy and give some time to yourself so that you are feeling great and living your best life, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Maya, thank you for being such an ambassador of healthy eating. <laughs> Take care, you both. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for Vegan Doc Talk with Dr. Scott Harrington. He'll be answering viewers' questions as well as telling you tips to beat the heat and thriving in this hot weather. And you can thrive by trying that pasta salad, right? <laughs> I bet that would be a good summer treat. Take care, everybody. <laughs>